Coffee Breaks Thursdays with Jason Zalakis. Hey everybody, we are live, Los Angeles, I'm fixing my hair. I just noticed it right before I sat down. We had some technical difficulties this morning, so we are live now and uh, still setting things up. You know, this is how it's gonna go today. We're testing a new lighting system here in the studio. Uh, some of you may have seen that this week that we got a new setup. And uh, so we're gonna give it a whirl here. Coffee Breaks Thursdays with Jason Zalakis. I am your host, Jason Zalakis. Let's have some coffee, folks. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you're here. It is a bipolar day here in California. Yesterday, we had a beautiful sunny day. And today in Los Angeles, man, gloomy and cold. And, you know, it is one of those days. My week this week was, was fantastic. I, I, had, I, had a, I had one of those weeks, right? Yesterday, I was like, Ah, oh, dude, we had a, we had the guest. Our guest this week was initially uh, Felissa Rose, as you guys know from um, from Sleepaway Camp. And at the last minute, she had to, she had to cancel because we we get working actors on this show, and I'm so excited about today's guest, you guys. Last minute, we got James Troop to fill in. I I I have wanted James on the show for so long. This guy, I, what I like about this guy is that he keeps it super super real. He's like me. This show today, if you're an actor, you're going to want to see this show. This is not uh, going to be your average, uh, your average uh, Coffee Breaks Thursdays. We're going, to, we're going to get to the real truths of what it's like to be an actor. So what it's like for me this week, man, was, was, was ups and downs, you know. I uh, had my moments where I was like, you know, dang, dude, the guest canceled. And people, uh, uh, you know, I, I felt like, um, well, you know, my... I, I got some some you know okay criticisms on an audition I did and nothing you know nothing feeling good and then today I had a movie come out and people are like dude it's really great and we love it and um, you know so it, it just changed like uh, like right away and then now we got we got James Troop and we worked it out we we had technical difficulties but we worked it out we're gonna be bringing him on the show and and uh, you know I gotta give you guys I gotta tell you I got the best producer in the world in this show Warren Madden. The best producer in the world. He works his butt off for this show, constantly takes my abuse, and 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 does it for this show. So shout out to him all the way over there in Florida. Uh, you know we we're here in LA and he's over there in Florida and he uh, he does his magic for us. He brings us great guests every week and and hammers out uh, irons out the kinks mostly <laughs> as as good as we can do on Facebook. Let me tell you. He, he gets the kinks ironed out and then Facebook puts some more in. So anyway, uh, Warren Madden is awesome. You got that. So uh, hi, shout out to uh, Nancy, former guest on the show. Thank you for being here. Um, let me, let's talk a little bit about this week before we bring our guest on. And I'm talking a mile a minute. I'm so excited today. I, I, I had a small amount of caffeine this morning. It could be that. Um, also, I'm running here. You, you guys know I started the show a couple minutes late because we had to run in here anyway. Hmm. And before I bring on our guest today, our guest today is it was in a, a voice on an episode of South Park. Uh, he's been in major brand commercials, stuff you've seen. I guarantee you, you've seen this guy on your television. I promise you, you have. So, so hang in there for uh, for James Troop. And I know Warren on the side still working, uh, still working it out there. Hopefully, we're going to get this going. But here's the deal: my uh, my week. I, I, like I said, I was thinking, you know, oh man, you know, I, I had some weak auditions or whatever, but I keep getting, I get, I keep getting auditions, which is the best part. And, you know, as long as I'm getting auditions, we got James wanting to be in the video. We're going to bring him on in just a minute. We got a few, we got a few more things to go. Probably get to James in about five minutes here. Thanks for being here, James. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, you missed the part where I hyped you already, but we'll hype you some more, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but I, I had a movie come out. And I got to tell you, I, the movie that's coming out, if you want to see it on my feed, uh, go to my page, Jason Zalakis, my personal page. My, my movie's on there. Uh, it's called The First Rule, and it just dropped. It's just out of, um, out of the circuit, uh, the festival circuit, and I just have a new movie going in, and I can't show you that yet, but I got to tell you that I'm proud of. Um, finally, a movie. My mother calls me. Calls me. That's what I have to tell you. That's, that's what's so significant about this movie. My mother calls me. Usually, I send her my film, and she goes... Oh, that's great, Jay. You know, not my kind of movie. Just within a text, you know, like, oh, we watched it, you know, and Daddy thought it was good, but you know, it's it's pretty violent. I sent her this movie, and I said, Mom, I, I can't. You can't show this to anybody yet because it's going to go to the festivals. But you got to see this film I'm in. And she was blown away. She calls me and goes, Jay, that was incredible. 
And, and of course, I die in the movie. You know, spoiler alert, I die in every movie I'm in. And, uh, you know, if I'm in it, oh, that guy dies. And, uh, you know, so uh, I, my mother goes, Jay, your death really bothered me. Like, your eyes and, like, all stuff. And she was talking about my acting. And for the first time, it was like my, both my parents were, like, stunned by my performance. And my dad was like... Jay, that was really great, and you know, and even producer Warren Madden, I, I, he got a sneak peek of the film, and he and he and he calls me like a day after he watches it, or he, he texts me and he says, uh, "Man, your death is still like bothering me." And I was like, "Dude, that was I, I did like this amazing performance. I'm really proud of it, guys. When it's in the festival circuit, I'll make sure you guys know when it is. The movie's called Remedy. I'm pretty excited about that coming out. Um, I also got asked to do another film, which is pretty exciting. Uh, it's a uh, it's a mob film, and I guess what? It's a John Wick type movie, and uh, guess who's the bad guy? Which means, guess who dies? Anyway, that's my week this week. So, uh, moving right along, let's get to Handsome History. Now, this week, it was tough to find some stuff in the news this week. It was tough to find some things this week that were, that were kind of funny or that were kind of cool because there's a lot going on, man. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I was a little, you know, as you know, when I do Handsome History, I, I'm inspired by something. And it's usually, um, it's usually, uh, uh, I'm reading the comments and smiling. That's why when I read it, like, oh, what, what, you think, thank you. Anyway, uh, the, uh, um, I decided to, uh, you know, be inspired and I decided to share some handsome history of uh, the Ukraine. <laughs> I don't know why I felt that way this week, but I decided to share some handsome history from the Ukraine before we bring our guest, James Troop, on. Guys, I got to tell you, dude, this guy is the real thing. He's the real thing. He keeps it more real than anyone I know, which is why I want him on the show. As I'm like, dude, if we're going to tell the truth about actors, we are bringing James Troop on. I fought hard to get him, uh, and, and we finally got him lined up, and I'm so excited. But before I do, let me tell you these fun facts about the Ukraine. In Kyiv, which is the capital of Ukraine, a lot of people think it's Kiev, and they've come out now and said it's Kyiv. They want to separate it from the other city that's called Kiev. So now they want you to know it's called Kyiv. In Kyiv. The McDonald's is one of the most visited McDonald's in the world. That, you, the Ukrainian McDonald's has one of the highest traffic McDonald's in all of the planet, which I was stunned by. I didn't know they had McDonald's there. I mean, I'm assuming they do, right? They have McDonald's anywhere. But, uh, but did you know that it was actually one of the most traffic ones is that one in Ukraine? Also, the actual Tunnel of Love. The real one, you know, the, the one that people go, oh, the Tunnel of Love or whatever. The actual one is in the Ukraine. I didn't know that. And one more, and this one you're going to really like. We all know the story of the lady who tells the soldiers, put these, uh, put these sunflower seeds in your pockets so when you die here, at least there'll be some sunflowers. But did you know that the Ukraine is the largest producer of sunflower seeds in the world? I didn't know that. And that's handsome history today, folks. One more thing I wanted to tell you. I'm watching this news story, and this guy, it's this baseball kid, and he's, and he's a high school kid, and he's the, he's the top prospect in baseball right now. It's, uh, Drew Jones or something is his name. He's got a baseball name, right? Drew Jones. And, uh, or a rap name, I guess. Drew Jones. But um, anyway, <laughs> Drew Down, I think, is what I was thinking of. But uh, anyway, Drew Jones is this baseball kid, and they're yelling at this kid, overrated overrated and I'm going are you serious he's a high school kid man like is that where we are now that we're gonna yell at a high school kid that you're overrated that's really where we're at and you know and I know our guest today I know he relates to that story because he, he's had to deal with people telling him I I, I stopped this guy right like <laughs> but I can't imagine that you would tell tell a high school kid he's overrated can you imagine those same people now are like oh my god I love Derek Jeter Derek Jeter's so great uh, he was such I knew he I was on to him when he was in high school like those same people yelling overrated at some high school kid and of course the kid smacks a home run which is exactly what our guest on the show does every time somebody fronts. I'm going to bring on James Troop, you guys. I'm very excited. We're going to get to this. A wild Coffee Breaks Thursday, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm pumped, man. I got a movie that just came out, and my parents dug it. That's, that's as high as it gets right there for me. Here we go. Here we go. James Troop, I lost your invite. Where are you, my man? It, it does this. This Here we go with another, another uh, thing where you know I have problems. Let's see if I can find him. I can't. 
Um, this is that part where I can't bring the guest on and I have this wonderful setup and I'm like, let's get to the guest. And then it totally doesn't happen, but he's going to ask to be on the video here any minute. I'm just looking again to see and, uh, dang it, thing closed. All right, Warren, you're on that one to see if you can get him to, uh, to get on this one. Thank God for producer Warren Madden week after week. I decided to show you guys toy of the week while we're waiting. And if we can't get James on, if I already blew it, he's probably like, this show sucks. And he bounced, but... Uh, oh, wait, he wants to be on the show. Oh, my God, we're going to have to wait for Toy of the Week. We might not do Toy of the Week. We're going to see. <laughs> Coffee, Coffee Breaks Thursdays with Jason Zalagas. Thank you for being here. Let's see. Oh, my God, we got him. Amazing. Oh, man, I was waiting to jump in here with that amazing segue that you did. I'm just like, wow, this guy's dope. Like, with the Homer segue, I'm just like, oh, man, he set me up nice. He did the <laughs> handsome history, and now I'm coming in here with the ugly acting. <laughs> Not a chance, man. That, that's, why I, that's why I'm so glad you're here. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you for, for having me, man. Thanks for being on the show. Um, let's get right to it. So, so, uh, <laughs> okay. So, so one of the reasons why I wanted you on the show is, is like I said, like I said before, you're one of the most real guys that I ever see. You do things that, that I don't have the guts to do. And I'm a pretty ballsy dude, man. Like, like you're out there showing your financial statements and what it truly is like to be an actor. So that's why I wanted to have, have you on the show. So I'm really excited about that. Before we get to that, let's back up a moment. Thank you. You, uh, you, you were, you're from Cincinnati. And one of I the things- I am from Cincinnati, yeah. And, and one of the things I like to is, you know, a, a lot of us are not from LA uh, or that, you know, we're not from SoCal. I'm from the Bay Area. So- Okay. So you That's decided, why you knew Drew down. I'm that's, impressed by that. You got some points, but I was like, what do you know about Drew Down? All right, go ahead. Sorry. That's why I know Drew <laughs> Down. Exactly. I, in fact, I wondered if you knew Drew Down because you're not from the Bay Area, but obviously you're a hip hop guy. Oh, yeah. You know stuff, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm good. Thank you for knowing that. That's really cool. Uh, I, I can't stop smiling. This is like a great moment for me to have <laughs> you on the show. Um, anyway, so you decide to make the move from Cincinnati. And yeah. you have a bunch of people, uh, my understanding is, you have a bunch of people who say, man, you can't do that. You, you, what are you doing? Why are you making this move? What is your craziness? And so the truth is, is what is your craziness, James Troop? <laughs> Why did you do that move? Because God told me to. to. To be completely honest, that's the reason. And I'm not some super religious guy or something like that, but I had a nervous breakdown, which is, you know, I hit rock bottom. And then I had to talk with God and, you know, that was it. But honestly, you know, aside from all of that, I just made a decision that I wanted something different for my life. Like I just felt like there was something more out there. And I felt like I was wasting brain cells in my IT career because I was just sitting on my couch, uh, drinking vodka every day, being depressed and doing my little uh, IT stuff and making $120,000 a year. I'm just like, yo, it's gotta be something more out here. And acting came and literally bit me on the ass. And after that, I just chased it like hardcore. And I had chased the music industry before this, okay? I had chased it for like 10, 15 years. One of my biggest mistakes was not moving from Cincinnati to New York, where the music industry was. So with acting, I literally got a second chance. And I'm like, who gets a second chance to chase like, a, a dream or a passion or something. And I knew what it looked like, so I got the hell out of there. I'm so, just like, most people don't even get a first chance, let alone a second chance. I'm not gonna waste this one. Right, so, you know, but Main Flow and Black Thought both came out of Cincinnati. They're, they're, they're both huge rap stars that came out of Cincinnati. Uh, but tell me about the moment that you dis that acting bites you in the ass. That's one of my favorite questions to ask. Cause I know when that happened for me. Mm -hmm. I know when I thought, oh God, I hate, I must hate money now because I'm going to act the rest of my life. Like, mm -hmm. like, tell me about that moment for you. Okay. So it's exactly what it was. I got cast in a play in uh, February of 2018. Okay. Was, was my very first time really acting. It was a community play um, waiting to exhale the movie with uh, um, the nineties movie with um, um, Whitney Houston in it. But um, it was a community theater. We did it in a high school gym. 
and we did five shows. I ran sound and acted in it at the same time. So I was literally running back and forth. But after those five shows, when I woke up on that Monday, I realized within five minutes of opening my eyes that I did not question why I woke up. Because I had been questioning why I woke up for since 2012 because I had a, a long-term relationship just end really badly and I sunk into a depression. I was a functional alcoholic, got fired from one IT job, got laid off from another IT job. So literally every morning that I woke up, I was like, you know what? I don't have a purpose for living. So I'm just going to wait until tonight. And when I close my eyes, I'm just not going to wake up anymore. And that's what I thought. And the moment I realized when I woke up that morning, I realized that I didn't have that thought. It had to be the acting bug. And I haven't had that thought ever since. It was the acting I, bug. I can't believe you said, see, that's what I mean. That's you keep it more real because that's stuff that I rarely say. So for me, when I was doing the corporate job, doing the thing, you know, I'm a retail guy and a sales manager and all this crap. Mm -hmm. I used to be in retail. Yeah. Circuit City. <laughs> Circuit City. Mm -hmm. Dude, I worked at I worked at Star Records, man. Uh, oh no, at Camelot Records. I worked at Camelot uh -huh. Music. That was back in the anyway. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> We're dating ourselves here. Right, right, right. Now you throw and you're throwing me off track. Uh, I never felt I never felt more suicidal, dude. More without hope than when I was nine to five in or got for dude whatever seven to three yes. in, you know whatever, right? Like I never felt more without purpose in my life. Yep, th yep. Than that. And so when you say, so I had this moment where I decided to move to LA and God talks to me. And you say, you know, I'm not, and I'm not a super religious dude. I'm really not, you know, yep. but, uh, but God, this homeless guy says to me out of all places, and I believe I, I'm, I, I've often been spoken to, uh, you know, by an angel dressed as a homeless man. And, Absolutely. and, right. <laughs> and he'll say, he says to me, man, you look like you belong in LA. And I'd already decided to move. And I went, I went, oh my God, dude, like, like I went tears, wow. dude, right? Right. Right. Like, I look like I belong in LA, man. So, so you make the move here, you get here. What do you do with, or do you have, um, fear, man? Like, like you've, you've had some acting experience, right? You don't just make, <laughs> obviously you do, but talk us through how you cope with that fear. How do you turn it into what, what do you mean, do I have fear? Fear was the first thing that I packed when I was in Cincinnati. Fear was the first thing that I unpacked when I got to LA. So God, I deal with fear every single day. Like even right now, I feel like that I'm not good enough for the six people watching. Like, why, why, are, why are we, like, why are you watching me? So like the, the, the fear was there. In fact, my very first LA audition I walked in with an in-person audition, September 2019. I walked in the room and for the first time I saw like 10 people who looked like me, who were dressed like me and they were clearly all there for the same part. I had a mini panic attack and I walked out. Like the pits were sweating, like I was breathing heavy and I almost got in my car and drove back to my Airbnb. But I had to take a deep breath and I'm just like, you did not move all the way across the country to be afraid to walk into that room and be who you know you're supposed to be. And I walked back into that room. Right, it, you know, in, in the Bay Area, right? Like I stood out, I get here, and the first thing I see is 10 people that look like me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and, and I go, oh my God, dude, like, yeah. so. And of course they can act better than me. They have to be able to act better than me. Every day, every <laughs> single day. It, Every person is a better actor than me, right? Like, like as, yep. as soon as I walk in, I go, oh my God, like I go, well, that guy, look at, you know, I, he's, he's not, maybe not dressed as nice as me, but I'm sure he's a better actor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. You know, and yep. it's funny you pointed out our low viewership. We get tens of views on this show, James. Hey, <laughs> just tens more viewers than I get on my Instagram stories. How about right. that? Hey, you know, you know, and, 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 and I borrow a viewer. <laughs> you know, it, uh, this show, I, I, we, we do okay. And there's times where I trip out, like you're talking about, like, I feel like, oh man, sometimes the viewer's low and I go, this guy's worth way more viewers than we're getting. And, you know, so I have those same moments even doing the show week after week, you know. Yeah, but it's our so, job to just put the work out there and just let the people, you know, do with it what they will. 
right job as actors you know <laughs> you know and a lot of times i i think i i'm doing the show uh you know personally honestly i i have a selfish motive i get to meet people like you i get to meet you know i so for me i have a yeah. selfish motive to do the show <laughs> that's uh, okay so, you know right so uh let's talk about something I, another thing that i that i suffer from and we're talking about these fear things you recently posted that you had your first um audition for a lead in a feature and that yeah. That was where you really got hit with imposter syndrome, which can, for, the, for the people who may not know, can you explain imposter syndrome? Because I know what it is. I have it. But can you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have it heavily. So you guys, imposter syndrome is feeling like you don't belong somewhere and you know you don't belong somewhere and you have a fear that everybody else is going to find you out. Like if you lie on your resume and then get the job, and then pe you're scared that people are going to realize that you lied on your resume and that you're an imposter and that you're really not supposed to be there. That's what I feel like with acting. Like, I feel like everybody else is just so much more experienced than me and that I'm just way in over my head every single day. Yep. So, so <laughs> right. So, but, but at the same time, okay. So I say things like, and I say things like crazy stuff, like, like, oh, dude, you know, I'm not attractive or dude, whatever. And then people, people go, well, dude, you're a calendar model. And I go, well, well yeah, but you know, what? whatever. <laughs> right. So, right. So, so when somebody says to you, but dude, like, like, I don't know how you could possibly have imposter syndrome. You're Wait. like the guy, right? Like, like, like you, what? I see you in that Jardians commercial and shout out to that. We want to um, segue into the Jardians commercial. Uh, okay. And, because everyone has seen it. Everyone has seen it, right? So, so it's definitely I, out there, yeah. I see you in the Jardins commercial and I go, dude, when I, when I audition, I got to be like James is doing. Like, look what he's doing. Like, you know, and that was a process to get there. Because as when I first got to LA, I'm just like, oh my God, I got to be perfect. Like, I got to have the perfect smile and, and the perfect chin. And, and, like, and so that's what I thought I had to be in my auditions. And I just now am becoming comfortable with the fact that me is my superpower. Like my wild and crazy personality, like that's my superpower right there. So there is only one me. And as long as I be the best me that I can, it generally tends to work. <laughs> so being myself was the hardest thing I had to, I'm still getting comfortable with that on the film side because I'm not quite there yet. Right. So you feel, okay, you feel that you've progressed to the commercial side because obviously you, you, you have six at one time, what, six national commercials running simultaneously. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. like I, I think any actor would kill for that. Like I, it's, it's a blessing, man. It, it's a blessing and it's a testament to my team, you know, my agent, my manager, just the people who I have advising me, my, my acting coaches, you know, all of that. It, it's really a team effort. You know, I, I got the easiest job here. I just go act. They got to deal with me. <laughs> right. So, so when you showed up in L.A., did you have that stuff? I had nothing. Absolutely nothing. Like I said, I showed up with fear and my girlfriend and my dog. But I had nothing. Um, I had, you know, a few dollars. I had just sold my house. And I, I just had a dream. And I had a person who I needed to go talk to, who I knew I needed to go talk to. Wendy Elaine Wright from the Hollywood Winter Circle. From right. She has a, a group, Talent Managers for Actors. And she really set me on the right course. But yeah, I had nothing when I got here. I got everything just through the grind of being here. So you didn't have a demo reel, you didn't have an agent? Not that. I had none of that back in Cincinnati, but my agent back in Cincinnati can't help me out here. So, right. Yeah, so I had nothing. I had an Actors Access page, I had casting networks, I had some really crappy headshots, but I was literally starting from square one when I got out here. So when you're, so then you, you decide to really go full blown, you meet with Wendy and she tells you from there, you obviously, I know, I know a little bit about the Hollywood winter circle. I know it's yeah. about your package and your presentation and those mm -hmm. things. So how much training then, because I, when you talked about, <laughs> hold on, don't get ahead of me, James. All right. When, when, uh, <laughs> when, when you talked about learning to be yourself, okay, so I'm in the same boat. And, and they go, like, I keep saying, okay, but, like, I look at the teacher and I go, you know, because that's me looking at the teacher right here. I go, but I'm not, 
being a character and they go no you are the character you just gotta like learn to, as soon as you like yeah. you know learn to be yourself and i'm going i'm paying hundreds of dollars to learn to not act right like how so, <laughs> isn't that crazy <laughs> so so how much training then have you like spent to get to this point like how many like, like you're filming every day, you're training like an Olympian, like what is, what is it? How, how do you start? Where, where do you go from there? Okay. So when I first said, you know what, I think I want to be an actor back in Cincinnati, I Googled Cincinnati acting classes, an acting class called Cincinnati Actor Studio showed up the first one. I was just like, oh, actually, no, I found some lady off of Instagram. Her name was Lana. Lana was great. She had acting classes in her apartment. <laughs> so with like six people, I was there for like a couple months and then I went to, I Googled another class and found Cincinnati Actor Studio and I, I went there and I was paying $25 a session and I was going uh, two days a week and it was group sessions. So, so what, $50 a week for like uh, 18 months before I moved out of Cincinnati. And then when I got here, um, acting classes are like uh, between uh, 600 and 700 probably like 75 dollars a class so 150 dollars a week okay so um i was in training with um uh geez i forgot his name um but the, i was there for 12 weeks and then i went somewhere else so honestly i've been continuously training if you look at my resume um the uh the training is is always there i just finished a voiceover class um, with VoiceCaster, um, last month I did an audition class with uh, with Amy Linden, and I'm about to join back up with my acting class at John Kirby Studios. So the training never stops. I had to go to training to, to learn how to do commercials, to learn how to audition for commercials. Uh, Mike Pointer at Hey, I saw your commercial. Oh my God, he's the one who who really gave me the game. So really, at Hey, I saw your commercial. Yeah, man, I know that. Okay, right on. So, uh, right. Okay, so. Do you believe, a, a guy said to me once, because I'm like the commercial, not, I mean, you're the commercial king, right? So for me to go, I'm the mm -hmm. commercial king is pretty silly. Mm -hmm. But I, I make it, most of my living, as, as probably, is, is made by commercials. And I mean, uh, Ben Affleck, stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you got to be making some money off that. Well, yeah, well, only if you want Ben Affleck to kill somebody, then, then that's when they call me, right? Do you, if you want Ben Affleck to die in your movie, then they hire me, right? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I, yeah. Wait, can we get Ben Affleck? No, we'll settle for this guy. Will he die? We'll take him. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's about the, that's about my qualifications. But uh, man, you're throwing me off on these amazing segues. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna stop it because they're so amazing. I'm gonna stop. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm joking. But uh, anyway, I have to. My producer says I have to keep the show punchy. So, uh, you know, there's that. Anyway, no, he he only he only moderately chips in on that stuff. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the training and all that. Let's go to another question I had because I got thrown off. You, the voice yes. acting. So, um, oh, commercials. I got. I remembered it. Thank you. A guy says to me once. I make all these commercials. And a guy says to me once, "Yeah, man, that's all cool, but anybody can do commercials." And I, <laughs> I love your reaction. I let it get to me. You talked about letting stuff get to your head, right? I let it get to me, and I said, "You know what? I'm not doing commercials anymore. I'm done. I'm not doing commercials anymore. I'm just film now." And, and, I, and I stopped doing it. And it wasn't until I moved to LA and was like, yo, I kind of need some money that I, <laughs> <laughs> that I started doing it again. How often, how hard is it to not let criticisms, you know, get, get, to, get to you? Like, I know you've dealt with it. It's, it's crazy because when, when we start acting or when, when we start acting, we think we have to be perfect. So, dude, I've actually developed complexes where there were no complexes before. I'm like, oh, my God, look at my teeth. Oh, that one's crooked. And, oh, my God, I have these fat little jaws here. And, oh, my God, do I need a, a little Botox, right? Like, so I'm developing these, these, um, these complexes. And so I criticize myself now way more. And I'm, I'm trying to let that go. So, again, and that's a part of learning that you don't have to be perfect being an actor and being Hollywood or being in Hollywood is not about being perfect. So I'm actively unlearning all that stuff that I internalized. Right. Okay. So actively unlearning. Okay. So my, the reason I smile is I can hear my wife laugh in the other room when you mentioned developing new complexes. Yesterday I go, I come out and I go, Laura, I got two like age spots. 
Like, I can't go in the sun anymore. They're going to get darker, and then they're going to get grown, and then no one will hire me. And I'm getting bags under my eyes, and, and no one, and the crow's feet, and no one's going to hire me then. And how am I going to get a job? I keep going to the sun, and I love the sun. And that's literally how I talk. And she's out there cackling yep. because yep. I developed, like, just yesterday, man. I'm so grateful you're the guest today. Yeah, because and now, now we have to unlearn it because perfection is the enemy of acting. Right. It is. Dude, check this out. I was on a veil for an Invisalign commercial. Like, for real. Like, really? Like, <laughs> but that's how crazy it is. Like, they want the imperfection. Like, I wish I could have you. No, I don't wish I could have your teeth because everybody has your teeth. Everybody has those perfectly white square teeth. And my my roundy, janky kind of, they stand out. I don't know how. It's, I have to do the, have to do the rest of the interview like this now. So anyway, <laughs> James. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to hate my smile, but now everybody in Hollywood tells me it's great. And I'm like, maybe it is. You're so you know? funny so because I, I'm trying to unlearn all that. I'm sitting here looking at you and I'm going, damn, dude, he's got so much fucking character and his teeth are fucking white. And why did you cuss? And, uh, you know, and I'm going, dude, and it's funny that you mentioned that because when I was in high school, we we're talking about, how, I was talking earlier about how they bullied that kid for being a great baseball player. They bullied me for having white teeth. I can remember on after the senior picnic, we're driving back. The senior, I'm a senior, and they're going, right. oh, you know, what? What do you never? And I'm going, really? You're bullying me for white teeth? I thought we were supposed to have white right. teeth. Like, like I thought right. that was like a thing, right? Like, you know. So, so yeah, complex. Complex is about we don't have to be perfect. Perfection is the enemy of acting. So I'm literally trying to let that go. In my very first acting like class workshop that I went to, someone told me that I was too facey. This was in 2018. I've spent every single day trying to control my facial expressions. My facial expressions is what gives me character. Why would you tell me that? So I've been literally trying to unlearn that every single day. We got to unlearn trying to be perfect. Right. And you're, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I've heard it like, you know, your character, if it has, your character has flaws, then it's more real because human beings have flaws. And, yeah. you know, and, and I'm trying to be like, you know, maintaining this character the whole time and forgetting that, right, I go too much in my head, you know. Uh, I stopped, uh, I stopped doing retakes on, uh, on audition mistakes. If I sneeze in the middle of a take, I'm turning it in. If I cough in the middle of a take, I'm turning it in. Because guess what? That's natural. People cough and sneeze in the middle of conversation. And they say, oh, excuse me. And they keep going. I literally turn them in. I don't because I'm done trying to be perfect. That's how I'm trying to, to, to unlearn all of that. If, if I'm sitting here doing a scene with you right now and, 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 and I just flub and I'm saying, see, you're making me frustrated. Now, what I was saying was, and I'll just keep going because that happens. Right. So F the mistakes, F being perfect. And, and how often is that the best take in the film then? The one where, you know, you know that was a mistake or that was an accident or... All you the know. time. As actors, we know that that's where the magic happens on set. That's where the magic happens when we give ourselves uh, freedom to open up and be real and just react. Like, that. that's what it is. So I'm, I'm learning all of that perfection shit. Right. Okay. So you know what just helped me? Wendy shared, uh, back to shout out to the Hollywood Winter Circle, and, uh, um, you know, uh, she shared this video of Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad. Mm -hmm. And you probably saw the video. And it was his, uh, it was uh, his audition tape. And you think Aaron Paul's this perfect character and everybody loves him. And yeah, you know, he was only supposed to be in one episode, but he was so great that, you know, he ended up running the show, this whole big thing. And you watch the audition tape and he goes, damn it, what's the line? And then and you, right in the middle of an audition and you're going, oh, I would have never, I would have died. You know, and I, and, I, and I wonder to myself, did Aaron Paul walk out of that audition and think, oh, that's it, I'm screwed. Well, of course he did, because that's what we all think. <laughs> Those are the ones we end up getting. So, yeah, of course he did. But that's the, that's the perfection. That is the enemy. Like, throw away that freaking perfection and stop thinking that you got to be perfect and just ad lib a line or two. Change a line or two. Say it how you would say it. If I, like, I'm not going to say going to. I'm going to say going to. So, I'm going to say it how I would say it if it fits within that character. And that just helps relax me. Like, throw away to perfection. Right. So my problem with that is that every time I use my own words, then it ends up being like, you should really consider this product, dude. 
Like, and then I'm like, don't say dude. And then I'm like, uh, you know, and then I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh man, you know what, man, you got within I, reason, right, right. So within I find reason. I was shooting a World War II movie, and I was all, I was all, listen, dude. And then they go take that line back, and I was all, oh shoot, you don't say dude in that scene. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's just it's just learning how to become comfortable and that's experience let's let's talk about getting recognized uh for for some of the things you do because you know do people come up to you after after saying you and do they okay so specifically jardians right like like do they think you have no i don't know what the heck jardians treats but do they think you have that um you know what i haven't had anybody recognize me from commercials i mean my friends and family but when I'm out in public, not a single person. I do shorts for uh, Darman, D-H-A-R-M-A-N-N. -N. Yeah. And he's like this inspirational, you know, we tell good stories and it's like a soap opera kind of thing. Has like 30 billion views. Uh -huh. People recognize me from that. Kids recognize me in the mall. They're just like, hey, you're from Darman. Like kids all the time, yeah. And how many? I was going to ask you about the Darman videos. Uh, Nancy Nazari, who was on our show, uh, also does those uh -huh. videos. And uh, and so I, I wanted to ask you about that. How many have you done for them? Uh, I think I just completed maybe my ninth one or something like that. You made nine yeah, for them? Oh man, some people have made like a hundred. Like Catherine Norland, she's made like a hundred twenty of them. Like oh my god, yeah, only nine. Oh man. I, I'm I'm a baby in the dark man game. Wow! And and when you're there, like, like is it like mind blowing? Because to me, what I've seen, it's like mind blowing how they roll up the sets, how they have this well oiled machine, and it is it is actually a well oiled machine. Yeah, it's a factory. They they crank those things out. It's fun. And so how many do you think they're like when you're there? Are you doing one a day? Are they shooting multiple at a time? Like, what's their production look like? I mean, can if you can uh, speak to it. No, no, I can absolutely speak to it. Um, they actually have two studios and they're building their third, but most of the work has only come out of the first studio. Um, and they have um, uh, different sound stages or different stages, probably like maybe 10 or 12 um, in there. And uh, sometimes it's two, uh, two scene or two crews in there shooting at once. Sometimes another crew shooting in the office. They can have, uh, they have six crews right now and they're, they're aiming to have them up and running simultaneously five days a week. Yeah, it's it's a factory. And I, yeah, I mean, those, those people are amazing. So you're like, dude, if you're gonna crank them out five days a week, yo, I need more than nine gigs here, bro. I need hey. like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate everything that they throw me, but I'm just like, man, Dar man hasn't called in a minute. Like what's going on, Dar? Hello. So, oh, okay, right. So when, so, when somebody I work with doesn't call me in a minute, I go, oh God, they thought my last product was shit. Right. I go, oh right, God, right. They yeah, I immediately go to, it's me. It's, oh my it, God, they hate me. I, I must be trash now. Right. Dude, calm down. We still love you. <laughs> right, right. So I started to, I, I was talking to my mentor and I said, man, listen, I, I'm starting to get worried. I've done like 15 auditions, man. I haven't, lo I haven't you know, landed anything. And he goes, bro, call me when, you have, when you've done 100 and you haven't landed, you know, and you haven't landed something. Like, like 15, yep. right. So. So, yeah, right. I did. I did three hundred fifty auditions last year. I landed maybe thirty two of those. So, so yeah, and that's on the high side. So yeah, right. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of auditions and not booking anything. So, right, and again, yep. you're real. You post your numbers. You keep yeah. track of it. You post your numbers right out there in public. You tell people through you know this many callbacks, this many holds, this many availables, and mm -hmm. you know this many book jobs. And I think it was forty eight mm -hmm. book jobs you had last year. Because like I said, I stopped. Oh, was it? So, oh, yeah, you did good last year, bro. I looked at your oh, thing. I was thank, like, thank you. I was like four yeah, book jobs year, a month. I forgot. Those right. were the those were the commercials. Yeah, that, right. I I I, did, I never even break it down like that. I'm just looking forward to not paying my rent next month so <laughs> oh my god looking forward to not paying my rent next month that that I'd right put there my rent on a credit card this this past month i put my rent on a credit card two days ago because because in this business it's feast or famine you're either you're either hitting a big paycheck or you're not hitting anything and it, and it, it, yeah you know and and i again right and you know another analogy I, I tell my wife you know dude i'm not i'm not hitting it she's like you know she's like jay even the best baseball players you know that analogy right even the best baseball yeah. players only hit you know, 30% you know, of the ball, 30% <laughs> of the time. Yeah. Yeah. I literally, I'm not even a real baseball fan like that, but that's the analogy that I try to keep in my head. You know, a good 
um, uh, batting average is uh, an amazing batting average. It's like point three five, and it's just like, bro, like you're you're you you're doing okay. Just just keep going. I, I I tell myself, dude. I say, dude, Ted Williams, the greatest season of all time. He hit four hundred, forty percent. Like as forty percent. As an actor, an I go, <laughs> no kidding, <laughs> right? <laughs> Right, but it's Hall of Fame worthy in baseball because that's how hard it is. So, you know, when exactly. we're talking about acting, people don't realize, you know, I say to people while well, I'm training, they go, well, why are you training? You're a good actor. And I go, no, that ain't what it, you don't get it. Like, like it, if you don't keep training, man, you can't get to the Olympics because that's yeah. how hard it is. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you got you to gotta work those muscles. And if, if you don't keep working them, they turn to flab. <laughs> so. so, right. So, so let's go back a little bit. Um, back to the Darman things. You said you get recognized for those. So yeah. I, I did a similar thing for a, a smaller company called Illumably, where they produce these um, videos where they're heartwarming and, you know, they're about whatever the current topic might be, uh, you know, police mm -hmm. brutality or uh, abusing an Uber driver or whatever, <laughs> whatever people are doing this week that's horrible, um, right. you know, and uh, uh, people write comments like they think I'm really that dude. Like, so when you get, that's, I get, you know, it, when you get asked about, like, okay, you said nobody recognizes you for Jardians and things, but they recognize you yeah. for Darman. Do they think you're really that dude? They go, hey, yo. You, I'm not sure because, like, the, the Darman universe is just so, so particular. I'm not playing the same character every time. So they know I'm an actor. So I'm playing a different guy in every episode. So they, they know I'm an actor. And so they like us as actors. It's, it's really strange because usually someone is playing just one character and you see them every week. But it's not like that with Darman. So they're like, hey, you're from Darman. So they don't think I'm the homeless guy who was sleep. At least I don't think they think I'm the homeless guy who would sleep on the curb. Oh, oh my God! So they do think I'm those things, and they and they and they <laughs> they they tell me like, okay, so they think I use the products I advertise. And, uh, okay. And, and, and so people always say to me, Jay, why are you worried about it? They know you're an actor, and I go, no, 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 they don't. And and maybe that maybe 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 I'm just no one comes up to me asking me about the flaming taint side effect that they got from Jardians, because that's a side effect. <laughs> Please don't come up to me and ask me about that. Ron doesn't know. <laughs> Dude, right, okay, so, so, right, so, okay, so one of the questions I want to ask you then is, and you're a big commercial guy, you've done Starbucks, you've done like all these major things. Is there a product you won't do? Like, like, okay, so I got one and it was for, uh, Oh, I can't remember now, but it was something I was like, nah, you know what, man? I don't think so. Like, is there a product you would turn down? Dude, let me tell you. You did hear me say I just put my rent on a credit card. <laughs> like, oh, God, right? right. So listen, the answer to that question is actually in my bedroom in an, in a sealed box. In a sealed box, I have um, professional cock rings. I think it's called the Eddie, E-D-D-Y, from a casting that I saw on casting networks for erectile dysfunction, and they wanted me to try this erectile dysfunction cock ring. So to answer your question, no, there is nothing that I won't do. I actually did my very first gig in L.A. was like an infomercial kind of thing for penis pills. And like I'm playing this cheeky doctor and it's called Rex MD. That was my very first gig in LA was for penis pills. So no, there's nothing I won't do. <laughs> there's nothing, <laughs> right? Because, because, because I think ultimately what it comes down to is, is yo, I could have principles or I could have, I could eat. And exactly. Right. And, and so they're, they're you know, because the one that, one that I ended up kind of caving my own principles on, and I don't care, and a bunch of people might get whatever about it, but it was, it was one for this gun thing. It was called Tactical Traps, and you have to hide these guns in your house. And, you know, and I thought, man, am I really encouraging people to, like, stash their guns in their, you know? And I thought, hey, man, yeah, I thought, you know, well, they're going to pay oh, me to do it. I did meet a line that I won't, that I won't do, actually, uh, two weeks ago. Um, I got a request for a political ad and I turned it down simply because and my, my agent was like, well, you know, it's a left leaning Democrat. And I guess they assume that I'm a left leaning Democrat. I don't know. I hate all politics. But um, but I'm like, uh, I'm like, but see, the nature of politics is that they can take that little thing.
and they could twist it and, and edit it and stuff like that. And I don't want to be a part of someone else's blood slinging. And then, especially since I'm now the Jardians guy, and then they've taken the Jardians guy and put him in a political ad attacking their opponent. I don't want any parts of that. So that's what I won't do. I won't do political ads. I have no interest in doing political ads. None. Right. So my agency sends me one. And I didn't realize it wasn't necessarily a political ad, but it was aimed, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago on the show or whatever, and it was aimed at these yeah. like rural farmers. And it was like, it was like, listen, don't let misinformation and scare tactics keep rural Johnson County from uh, having solar generated energy fields. And it was basically like convincing these Midwest folk, you know, uh, what I guess they assume are hillbillies. I don't know. I've never been over there. But uh, yeah. to, you know, listen, you know, you should embrace solar power. And I was like, I was like, you know what? I, I don't know that, like, I don't personally have an opinion on rural Johnson County. I've never fucking been there. So I'm going, right. you know, so I'm going, how do I know they're not going to twist it and use it in some way where I become this douchebag that was like, well, right. you're the guy who told us to get solar. And I'm like, well, I right. didn't know. Yeah. I, See, you know, <laughs> I agree. I, I just don't trust them. And I would just rather stay away from it. I, I just don't trust them. Right. You're, you're not about to use my name to do harm. Hell, I'm doing enough of that on my own with my own name. So oh you're my not about God. to do that. Right. If you want to if you want to use my name to do harm, I've got I've got, you know, my past forty years I could I could right. I'm have. doing that good enough on my own. Right. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna do enough harm out here trying to pretend I'm an actor this week. You know. Oh, so so let's before I, I I, I love this conversation, but I do want to touch on some of your, your crazy achievements because I could talk about I could talk about the brutalities of acting literally for hours and we should get together and do that in LA. We should hang out and we should <laughs> right. we should talk about how the, you know how harsh it is to be an actor. But we need a support group. <laughs> but you you got a role on South Park. And and I know the, the fans want to know about that, about this role in South Park. Okay. To me, like I told you, I, I hold you in high esteem. I think you're one of these guys that's really great, really doing something really real. And you. when you were on South Park, I was like, oh, that's it. I was like, you know what? I'm done. I was like, I, I was like, that's it. I, I give up. I can't even, I can't touch that. I was like, and not that, not that I have to compete with you, but I was like, I was like, I can, is there anything greater than being a South Park? Like, like, I mean, like, tell us man. about it. Oh man. Like, <laughs> So I had, it, South Park was definitely a moment where I'm just like, oh my God, I might just be good enough. Like Starbucks was that moment for me last summer when I booked that Starbucks Christmas commercial because I'm like, oh my God, I'm Starbucks material. Like Starbucks, or if I walk into Starbucks, I might actually get arrested just for being in there. And the fact that they want me in their commercial, like, oh my God, I've made it. Like I am. <laughs> so like, I felt that way about South Park and i'm just like this is this is the holy grail like oh my god i'm good enough for south park like my voice is good enough matt stone who voices uh um kyle and butters and um like he personally produced my session and i'm like oh my god i'm, I'm good enough like holy holy crap but the thing is i found that just through actors access it was there it was just on actors access and I just pushed the button just like I do every day. And I just submitted an audition just like I do every day. And I just got it. And I just ended up at South Park Studio being coached and making, I made Matt Stone crack the hell up. I mean, once I found out what he wanted me to do, we recorded so much stuff that did not make it into the show. Oh my God, this guy was cracking up laughing. And I'm just like, I can walk outside here and die now. Look, let me tell you something. If somebody goes back and checks the video footage of me walking out to my car from the studio, oh my God, they're going to see a whole dance session because I lost it. I lost it. I kept it together in that session, but I lost it when I went to the car. Right. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I would have done the same thing. I, I'm telling you, I, I would have felt like, you know what? I'm done. I don't think I could, I, I think I can fall off the planet now. Man, man. I, I get to tell everybody that I'm on South Park. Like I, that, I, I've reached the pinnacle. Like, you know how long I've been watching this show? Right. Like, oh my God. Ooh. You, you want me to be blacker South Park? Okay, I was going to be blacker for you. Like, man, I, I was just so excited to be there. Like, is that what they ooh. had you do? And I know that they pushed the envelope. I mean, uh, but is that what they, can you, your I mean, episode so aired, right? It did air. The episode already aired. So, okay. Um, 
So Stan had a black friend token, okay? Right. And Stan was realizing, or Stan thought that his name was Token, as in token black guy. Right. But actually, it's Tolkien, like, you know, George, or the guy who wrote the, the J.R.R. Tolkien. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, him. So, and everybody's like, dude, you're racist. Why'd you think that? And so he went to the doctor and the doctor was like, you need to read some classic literature, but you need to do it from a black perspective. So they wanted the, the classic uh, South, the classic literature in the most blackest ghettoest voice that you can, that you can find. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I am paraphrasing. Right. They did right. not say that. Right. And I'm just like, I'm just like, oh shit, so you want me to sound, oh, okay, so, yeah, so I'm up in there reading uh, 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 Lord of the Rings like this, and Dean Frodo then went up the mountain, and motherfucking the dragon was in there, like, so that's how I'm reading it, oh my god, man, we are having a field day in there, but, like, that was, that was the South Park episode, man, so much did not make it into that episode, and, like, it almost got cut. And the uh, and one of the the production folks said, actually uh, emailed me and said Matt Stone told us to reach out to you personally, to say that he enjoyed working with you. That unfortunately the scene won't make it on air. And I was like, oh man, I wrote him back. I'm like, bummer. We'll tell Matt it was a great, you know, it was great working with him. And if he ever needs a black guy, let me know. <laughs> so, uh, and then a half hour later, they was like, well. It might make it in after all. And I was like, oh my God. And then I had to wait because we recorded that on a Monday and it aired on a Wednesday. So I wow. submitted for it Thursday. I submitted the audition on uh, um, Friday, got the call on Saturday, tested for COVID on, on Sunday, recorded on Monday, and it was on air on Wednesday. Uh, that's that quick. That, first of all, it, it, I didn't know stuff like that was achievable. Like you showed me that that was even possible. And then, but it, the other thing is amazed at the speed of Hollywood, right? I don't think people understand that. I, listen, I auditioned on a Thursday, right? And then, and then like, you know, by Friday morning, I'm going, well, so I guess I didn't get it. And people are like, no, man, you don't know. And I'm like, oh no, I know. They're, they're already yeah, shooting yeah. it. <laughs> like, yeah, they're already shooting it, bro. Right. It's already wrapped. So it, that's one of the things that you have to learn is, and that only comes with experience. Like you have the experience to know, Oh, if I haven't heard it for an audition from an audition by this time or a callback within this time, then I didn't get it. I can just move on. So that all comes with experience of putting in the work, which you are doing. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, so so let's talk about a few more things. What do you have coming up? I mean, South Park, right? Like, like, but I, and you know, we could talk about South Park for days and days. Like, uh, I mean, what an honor. And and you know, the other thing about Hollywood too is that it. That's the other thing is you're in the picture, you're out of the picture, you're in the picture, you're out of the picture. And I've talked to lots of actors that, that that's happened to, you know, yeah. and, and that is, I mean, how did we not go gray, right? Like instantly, like with, well, <laughs> yeah, I've got this too. Another thing. I, I was I, not this gray when I got out here. That, right, because, the, you know, even this, right? And I'm going, well, you know, maybe I should tell my age and I can't really play 30s anymore. Like, you know, and, I'm, and then they go, well, you could dye your beard. They always tell you that. You could dye your beard and I'm like, nah, that, that looks fake. You yeah, can't, yeah I, I ain't gonna do that. So tell yeah. me, what do you have coming up? What, what, what is on the plate? And, and you know, you're gonna be real. So what do you have coming up? Did you just freeze? Yep, oh, you did. I'm be, yeah, all right, <laughs> the computer yeah. froze. I, I'm gonna be absolutely 100% real. I got on my plate, um, I'm happy to tell you guys that I have on my plate uh, nothing. Yep, I got nothing. I got nothing coming up. Nope. I just shot uh, something for Google um, uh, about a couple weeks ago, but I have nothing. I have, I mean, I've done auditions. People don't understand the acting life. I don't act for a living. I audition for a living. That's the thing that I do every single day. Acting just happens rarely and I'm thankful for when it happens. But the thing that I do most consistently is, is audition. So honestly, I don't have anything on the horizon. I'm hoping to get something on the horizon because even when I do book something and film it, it still takes a while for the checks to come in. So this rent may be going on another on the credit card um, 
uh, on April first or Mar April first, wherever the hell we are. But um, yeah, I have I have nothing. I got actually, you know what? I don't have nothing. Buzzfeed uh, actually uh, contacted me the other day. I do a lot of voiceovers with for Buzzfeed, and now we're starting to add the on camera uh, portion because I'm trying to be the unsolved mysteries guy. Nice. <laughs> so, so um, <laughs> but I have I have a project for Buzzfeed. Uh, they just contacted me about that uh, uh, yesterday. But uh, and I just got an email that says casting a documentary for a short film from Tiffany Company Casting. Hey, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I have nothing. Nothing. Right. And, and that's the hustle every day. I got to go out and find a new job every day. Right. And, you know, when I tell people, you know, it, 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 sometimes I go, yeah, all I do is look for work. It's all I do. Even when yeah. I have even when I have something booked, I have to keep looking for work because there comes these spots. Yeah. And, and then that's, a, again, where I go, well, I don't have anything lined up. Then I start to have a panic attack. And then I start to go, you know, back into that same mode again. Where I'm, yeah. and, then, and then, you know, it, it could be tomorrow. You could get two things lined up. Or even, exactly. even later today. You know, I mean. Exactly. Right. So we never know. That's one of the things that I love about being an actor is that I never know what my day is going to look like. Someone asked me, what does my typical day look like? Aside from waking up and opening up my laptop and, and checking the casting sites and pushing the buttons, I don't have a typical day because anything could happen at any given point. I could get an email right now that says, hey, we want to put you on a veil and we need you on this set. So go and COVID test right now. And I got to say, hey, I got to end the interview. I got to go. <laughs> so, no, no it, it, that's the reality of it. Like right. That. Yeah. It, and people don't know that they uh, like I was I was driving home from an audition and they're like, you got to go back there tomorrow. Oh, I just got that Tiffany company casting a documentary. I just got that. Hey, see, <laughs> <laughs> see, we are on the same grind. Someone asked me in an interview yesterday, have you found any kindred spirits or like minded people? And I'm just like, not really, because it doesn't seem like anybody's out there working as hard as me. This guy right here is working just as hard. Like he saw us both get the same emails at the same time. That's what it takes every single day. Man, you know, I was thinking about it. I was thinking I was in the shower before the show and I'm thinking, man, you know what I like about James is he's a lot like me. He's, he's a commercial guy. He's hustling all the time. And then I go, well, I don't have no South Park. Like, <laughs> Stop that, and then man. I was like, ah, and then I was trying to think of anything I have that was close to South Park and there's nothing. I do that to my buddy, my acting buddies. And I'm just like, yeah, I got South Park, but I don't have NCIS. I don't what? have my first co-star on TV. I don't have network TV. I don't have Netflix. So I do that to myself too. And I'm just like, stop that. Stop doing that. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. So, you know what? Yeah. You know what? And, and t so, so James, d tell the people where they can find you, man. Like, like, where can they where can they get more of this brutal reality um, of why they should not become an actor? <laughs> right, why they should not become an actor. Before I was trying to tell you guys why you should become a music producer that I was chasing. Now I'm right. trying to tell you why you should become an actor. Right, it. it's for crazy people. It's for crazy um, people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you can you guys can find me at at James Troop Actor. Troop is spelled T R O U P. Um, it's that across all socials. Um, you know, I'm just sharing my journey from, you know, being uh, a, an IT alcoholic to hopefully um, not developing a coke habit. Well, no, a coke habit is, is my goal because that means I make enough money to afford cocaine. So a coke habit is my goal. So <laughs> but, right. yeah, my journey from IT over to, to Hollywood, just, just trying to become a working actor and, and pivot, you know, at, at 40, I'm 45 right now. So I'm just trying to reinvent myself you know right and you know i'm 48 and and to come from the yeah. retail market and to, and to step out here and you know and that's another thing you know is that is that i feel like oh man i'm too old to join the game too yeah, you know that's... oh man you know should have done this I 20 years ago that. well you know like they say the best time to start was 20 years ago the second best time to start is now right now yeah you know Man, folks, you got it. Hey, James, any words to the, I mean, you got, you're full of wisdom. We could have ended on any of those wonderful <laughs> notes. What, anything else, you know, to, other than don't do it, any, uh, any recommendations for, an, for a starter, you know, where, uh, any, any words of wisdom? Get up off your ass. It's not going to come to you. You have to go and make this thing happen. No one is going to take care of you. No one is going to bring it to you. Your agent is not going to do it for you. Your manager is not going to do it for you. You are sitting on your agency's roster, not doing anything because you're not, you're doing, you're not doing it for yourself. 
and the people who are booking are doing it for themselves. So get off your ass and take your career into your own hands. That's it. That's what I do every day. That's, that's what it. Jason does every day. That's, that's it. it. That's what, man, that's why I wanted you on the show. James, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, you I know. appreciate you having me, man. I man, appreciate it. Thank I can't you. wait to talk to you more, dude. I hope to I get to see you on a set, but be on me with you too, you know? <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's only a matter of time before our paths cross. They're going to put us in a buddy cop movie or something. <laughs> so, I would, I could, you know what? We should write that. I love that idea. Hey, TM, we own yeah. that. We own that now. Nobody can take that. That's James yeah, and Jason. Black, black, white, buddy cop movies. We own that. Nobody we own that now. One and, and we're going to do it we, now. We so got Hollywood, it now. Don't take our idea. That's it. <laughs> Folks, thanks, thanks for man. watching I today. James Troop, thank you for being our guest. We'll see you next week's Coffee Break Thursdays with Jason Zalakis. Bye, everybody.